wish them well and we want to make sure that they don't think that this is the end this is the beginning I want to thank all of my teachers that I have had throughout my school years, especially the ones at Fountain Blue High School. You've had to persevere, you've had to stick in there, you've had to see it through. Wonderful, and welcome. Uh, will Mandy uh, Bezor and William Butterworth please come forward? Mandy will lead us in the invocation, and uh, William will lead us in the pledge. Please rise. Hello. Okay, um, I would like to thank all of our families and friends for joining us today. Will you all please join me for prayer? I would like to thank God for each and every one of us making it, making it here today for this wonderful occasion. And I pray that he watches over us for the journey that we are all about to embark upon. I pray that you keep your hands on all of us and help guide us in our lives. I want to thank you for helping me and the rest of us succeed in our journey. Amen. everyone please listen thank you i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all thank you thank you very much you may be seated Good evening, uh, my name is Courtney Cherry. I'm the supervisor of adult and community education for St. Tammany Fair Schools. And so I, uh, with that, I get the honor of being the host tonight. We welcome each of you. We're so glad that you're here. We're uh, so proud of the graduates and uh, we wanna have a special, this special occasion to honor them. Uh, I guess before I forget it, I just wanna tell you that this is being filmed and it will be broadcast on our own school board channel 13 tomorrow afternoon, and then several times thereafter. You just can look in their schedule and see. You'll be able to tape it off of the, uh, off of the TV, and it'll be yours to keep. This is a very, very special occasion. I know for you, your family, and your graduate, uh, it also is for us at school board. We have a lot of school board officials here because they're very proud of the accomplishment that you have done. I'd like to introduce them. First is Ms. Gail Sloan, superintendent of St. Tammany Fair Schools. Uh, Mr. Trey Foltz is uh, Assistant Superintendent, Deputy Superintendent. <laughs> Ms. Cheryl Araby is uh, Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum. 
And we are uh, very pleased to have several school board members here with us tonight because, again, they think this is a very important function for y'all. They're very proud. First, Mr. Neil Hennigan, president of the school board. Uh, Mrs. Mary Kay Belisario, vice president of the school board. Ms. Elizabeth Heinz. Uh, Mr. Ron Betancourt. Mr. John Lamarck. And Mr. Donald Villery. Well, this, uh, again, is such a wonderful opportunity. Uh, you know, we have graduates of all ages that have finally come to accomplish a, a goal that's probably been uh, a lifetime goal for them. And uh, I want you to know that this is a major step, very difficult. It is not easy to do this. You know how hard they've worked. You know that they've had to take time out of their lives, take time away from their families, perhaps away from their jobs, come down there, uh, hit those books again, study. It's a very strenuous test. It's about seven and a half hours of testing in math, science, social studies, reading, uh, English, and writing an essay. So they've accomplished a lot. We, again, are here to wish them well, and we want to make sure that they don't think that this is the end. This is the beginning. You've done this. Now you can go anywhere you want, job hunting, onto professional school, onto college, onto vocational school. You've shown that you're, you can achieve, you can do it, you're winners. So we're very proud of you. Uh, <clears throat> Just as proof that this is not the end, we have a, a very special friend of ours that uh, started out kind of in the seat that you're in. He left school early, finally came to uh, work his way back and graduate with a GED, went on from there, went on to uh, the uh, New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary, then pursued uh, secondary uh, advanced education, UNO, Southeastern Louisiana. Uh, Mr. Claude Gilliatt is a licensed professional counselor and a professional uh, marriage and therapy, family therapy counselor. He has served as a pastoral counselor, admissions counselor, multifamily group counselor, and as a contracted mental health professional for St. Tammany Fair Schools. Uh, he's worked with families, couples, individuals, and adults and adolescents in his time as a counselor. Uh, he's been very kind to come and volunteer to work with us several times in our graduation because he has a great story. He served as a mediator and conflict resolution specialist with corporate, in the corporate environment. Um, he does do work with large and small groups. He'll even counsel over the phone. So we're pleased to have him here tonight to tell us his story of where he went when he left that chair that you're in. Would you welcome Mr. Claude A. Gilliatt, please? Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. I look forward each year uh, to getting on this stage and looking out at some very happy, bright, smiling faces. Again, I know how hard you all have worked uh, to be here. So my job, as I understand it today, is to encourage you, to congratulate you, and perhaps to challenge you as well as you go forward from here. I also have learned over the years, and I read this again recently, <clears throat> that the best speakers have a really strong opening to get your attention. They have a great ending that ties things up, and they keep those two close together. That's part of my goal tonight, too. 1973, I was young, brash, bright, rebellious, angry, lots of things, and decided that I didn't need no stinking school. Well, it didn't take me long to find out that that wasn't quite true, now was it? And I was very fortunate to have a mother who had dropped out of school very young, and to get me to go said, come on, I'll go with you. And there we were. Now, I'm looking out today, I don't see a lot of folks over 30 out there. No. 
And by the way, you all got to put on some smiles. Some of you guys looking like there's a party after this and y'all holding me up. Come on now. <laughs> Here's what I want to challenge you to do. We're going to do a little group therapy, if you will. You won't have to answer any questions to me, but I would challenge you to answer three questions for yourself that I think are going to make a difference as you go forward from this place. Number one, <clears throat> why'd you leave school? Why'd you quit high school? Now, I know there are as many answers to that question as there are people uh, in the audience this evening. I've heard many stories. We're going to hear a few in just a moment, and I'm always impressed and challenged by those stories of hearing the hardship sometimes and then sometimes stories like mine, just a knucklehead who thought he had it all figured out and realized quickly that he didn't. The importance, I think, of understanding why we left is to make sure we learn from that experience and, and, and try not to maybe repeat some of those sorts of things in the past. Now, and again, some of you left for hardships uh, that don't, there's no need to be ashamed of anybody's story, I guess, is what I'm trying to tell you today. So important to know where you came from. Question number two, what made you decide to go back and work so hard to accomplish what you're here tonight to celebrate, getting your high school equivalency diploma? I'm proud of you all. You should be very proud of yourself. That is not an easy process. Back before electricity, when I went through, I don't think it was quite as tough as you guys face these days. Um, again, whatever reason you quit, whatever reason motivated you to go back and accomplish what you have, congratulations. You've worked very hard. Can we give them all a big hand? I suspect some of you thought, oh, this is never going to get finished. Well, it will shortly. You'll have that piece of paper in your hand. That's exciting. The third question I want to challenge you with this evening, where will you go from here? Now, some of you chose to come back and accomplish this uh, feat so that you could go forward in your careers, so that you could go on to technical colleges, university settings, community colleges, um, the service, all sorts of reasons. Congratulations. Again, I know there are just as many stories there as they are to why folks left school in the first place. My challenge to you is let this not be the end of your education, but really the beginning that uh, you're able to walk through this door now. This, this accomplishment is going to open doors for you that you would not have been able to accomplish without it. And so, walk through that door boldly, be very proud of yourself, and go forward and accomplish those things that you only dreamed possible in the past because they're now a reality for you. I was going to just briefly tell you, I, I, I did in fact go on and finish uh, college and uh, did graduate studies, worked in radio and television for a number of years, went back to school to get a graduate degree and work in the field of mental health uh, today. I think that if you will answer those three questions for yourself, you'll help improve your own mental health and it will encourage you to go forward, to not stop tonight. Again, congratulations. I promised I'd keep the end close to the beginning. Thank you all for being here this evening. Hopefully you learn from tonight and from your own accomplishment that you can, the sky's the limit. You can go, if you apply yourself, you can go as far as you would like. Uh, there's one important group that I didn't announce or introduce, but, uh, but each of your teachers has dealt, I mean, each of your students has dealt with one of these teachers uh, during the course of their studies. Our adult education staff, would y'all stand please for a minute? I'd like to introduce them, give them a hand. <laughs> and that's the St. Tammany Parish teachers and including uh, uh, Denise de Villiers and Maisha Harrell from, with WIA also. And then one important person, stand up, Virginia. Where's Virginia? Right there, stand up for a minute. Unfortunately, you're going to have to say goodbye to her. She's retiring. <laughs> and it's not that she doesn't love us, but she just can't get that smile off her face. But we're, we, we appreciate the work that she's done. Will Kristen Alford and Valerie Keller come forward, please? And then when they finish, we'll ask Hannah 
Morley and Mona Morell to come up afterwards. You know, each, each of our students has a story and it's, and it's just wonderful. It's really a thrill for us to hear their stories because you know, sometimes you hear people say, oh, the GED, those people, they were just dropouts. No, they have no idea the struggles that you've gone through, the challenges you've faced and overcome. You're fighters, you're winners. So we always enjoy having a couple of our students give a testimony as to their struggle, their triumph, and we're so proud. This uh, at first is uh, Kristen Alford. Good evening, honored guests, graduates, families, and friends. My name is Kristen Alford. I'm 23 years old. When I was a baby, I had a lot of medical problems and spent many years of my early life in the hospital. When I started school, I was diagnosed with a learning disability and received special education services all during my school days. I struggled in regular school and did not think I could ever finish high school with anything but a certificate of achievement. I did finish high school in the Option 3 program. I wanted to take the GED, but I never thought I would be able to pass. My special teachers at Fountain Blue High School, Coach Hershey and Coach Favre, gave me the hope and confidence to one day take and pass the GED. With their help and the support of my parents, I stand here today with a GED in my hand. I want to thank all of my teachers that I have had throughout my school years, especially the ones at Fountain Blue High School, and again, mainly Coach Hershey and Coach Favre. They helped me with my math work and got me to a 10th grade math level. They had faith and confidence in me and convinced me I could pass the GD if I really tried. I also want to thank Miss Mary and adult education teachers that helped me during my GD classes. Lastly, I want to thank my mom, dad, my sister Heather, and her family for their faith in me and their encouragement to keep working to my, get my GED. I have accomplished a huge goal that I never thought I could accomplish. It took me a long time to pass the GED, almost three years. Sometimes I wanted to give up because it was hard and frustrating. But again, with my teachers, families, friends, faith in me, I never gave up. And because I never gave up, I passed my GED. That faith in me from family and friends helped my dream come true. So I say to you tonight, never give up on your dreams, no matter how hard it may seem. It may take a long time, but do not give up, ever. Your dreams can come true. Just have faith and hope in yourself and always keep trying to reach for your goals. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Valerie Keller. I have recently completed the adult education program for St. Tammany Parish Schools. I dropped out of school in 1969 and went to work to support myself and my son. At various times in my life, I have tried to go back to school to finish my education, but things always seem to get in the way. Finally, on September 17, 2007, I decided to get my diploma. I was very frightened of what lay ahead. I have not been in school in 39 years. However, at this time, I was determined to finish the job I had started so many times in the past. I enrolled at the Slidell Education Center. I worked hard, not only at school, but at home. I'm not saying it was easy to go back to school after being out so long, but I continued to go to school until my goal was achieved. I earnestly await my GED diploma. I also appreciate the kindness of my instructors, Ms. Jean, Ms. Virginia, Ms. Denise, and Mr. Jim. And I, will look, and I look forward to my future. Thank you.
Now would Miss uh, Hannah Morley and Mona Morrell come up, please? Sure, you can. <laughs> Good evening. My name's Hannah Morley, and I'm 17 years old and have a nine month old baby boy. I work 40 hours a week, and none of this was just handed to me. I had to work very hard for what I want. At 16 years old, I found out that I was going to be a mom. The whole time I was pregnant, I kept saying that I was going to finish school, but once reality set in that I was 16 and about to raise a baby by myself, I thought about dropping out of school a lot. I brought up the subject a lot to my dad and he was completely against it at first. But once he thought about what type of person I am and my promise to get my GED, he finally agreed with me. Two weeks before I had the baby, I dropped out of school and the very next day, I started my adult education classes in Slidell. I was in the classes for about two weeks and then on August 30th of 2007, I was admitted to Slidell Memorial Hospital to have my baby boy. I took three weeks time off from the classes at home recovering and then I started the classes again. My dad watched my son every day while I went there. Around mid-November, Mr. Jim Cluster told me I was gonna be recommended to take the GED test in December of 07. Oh, I have the wrong page. <laughs> now that I've gotten my GED, I'm working 40 hours a week and raising a baby by myself. One day when I got home from work, my dad handed me a piece of paper. It was my diploma. It was one of the most exciting days of my life and a day I'll never forget. Now I just had to think about what I was going to do next. One day I got a phone call from a wonderful woman, Miss Denise Davalier. She told me about a great job opportunity that she thought I'd be perfect for. I went and met with her and the lady that I would soon be working for and now I'm working 40 hours a week, raising a baby by myself and making sure that he and I have everything we could possibly need. I couldn't have made it this far without the following people. My dad, because he stuck behind me 100%, and he's never failed to pick me up when I'm falling. My best friend, Brittany. When all of my other friends left me, she was the only one who stood by my side. And Miss Denise, because she's always helped me, and she's gotten me to the point where I am now, and she's never stopped believing in me, and she's always challenged me to want better for myself and for my son. And most of all, the most important person is my son. I never thought I could love someone so unconditionally. No matter what I'm feeling every minute of the day, he's always the only one that makes me feel better. And I always make sure that I do everything possible to make sure he has and loves and respects me for giving him the best life possible. And through all of this, I'm very proud to be standing here today Thank you. Oh. Hi, everybody. My name is Mona Morrill. When Miss Tony first asked me to speak at the graduation, I agreed. I figured she had something that she wanted me to read. And then she told me that I was to write something, and it only had to be three or four minutes long. And I thought, three minutes is an eternity. <laughs> So I felt compelled to tell her about this study that I had heard about recently, and the study was on people's biggest fear. And the number one fear most people had was um, speaking in public. Following just behind that was death. Um, I guess she found that interesting, um, but didn't let me off the hook, so here I am. <clears throat> I guess I should start out by telling you why I um, didn't finish high school. Um, I grew up in a small community, um, going to school with the same kids from elementary to junior high, eventually onto high school, and then we moved to the city. Um, it was a big change for me. The school was huge, and I had to make all new friends, which was hard to do, especially since what I really wanted to do was graduate with my friends that I'd gone to school with all my life. Um, so as a result, uh, I didn't want to go to school. Um, I missed a lot of days, didn't do the makeup work, and eventually fell behind. Well, then I decided I wasn't going back to that school. I was going to get a job, and I was going to go to work. And that's what I did. Um, as life went on, I realized 
that I didn't want to be working in the field that I was working in for the rest of my life. And in order to pursue any kind of a career, I had to go back to school to get my GED um, in order to be accepted by any college or university. Um, so I did a little research and I found out where I needed to go to take the classes and to study for my GED. Um, at first I was a little appreh apprehensive um, because I thought I was going to be the oldest student in the class. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't sure how much knowledge I had retained from school and I just knew that it had been a very long time since I had been in school. So my first relief was that there um, were students my age and older, so I wasn't the oldest student on the planet. Um, my second relief was just how helpful and accommodating Miss Mary and Miss Tony were. Um, they let me know that it was okay to be nervous and it was very normal. Um, through the process of taking the classes at night, I realized um, it was a lot of work, but there wasn't a whole lot of pressure as far as um, you, I could work at my own pace and um, move on as I felt comfortable. Um, I remember telling Miss Mary, you know, when I'd feel comfortable with a subject and uh, felt that um, I had the subject down pat to reasonably what I need, thought I needed to know, she would say, well, why don't you take a test? And I don't know about anybody else, but for me, um, you know, you can hand me a piece of paper and ask me to answer the questions or solve the equations, but as soon as you mention that one little word, test, my brain wants to leave. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I went ahead and of course took the test and surprised myself um, by doing better than I expected. Um, by her doing that, I think it really helped me to prepare me for when I took my final exam. I wasn't so nervous. Um, so, let's see. I wasn't nervous till I got up on the stage tonight either. Um, so I guess bottom line, it, um, it was a lot of hard work. It wasn't as hard as I, as I thought it was going to be because in, in my mind, um, I'd already figured out that I wasn't going to do well, that it was probably gonna fail and have to do it again, um, which really wasn't the right attitude. But by Miss Mary and Miss Tony's confidence in me and their encouragement, I got past that. Um, I believe teachers have one of the hardest jobs there is and very often don't get the recognition they deserve. Um, in my opinion, it takes a special person to do what they do every day. It takes a lot of passion, desire, and love to do the work that they do. Um, as I got to know them both, I um, at first thought Miss Mary was going to be the nice, um, sweet one. Which, you know, turned out to be true. Um, she is very nice, soft-spoken, and she was very, very helpful. As for Miss Tony, um, I thought she was going to be the mean one, and really very serious. And as that turned out, um, she wasn't mean at all. Um, she has a great sense of humor. Um, she's serious when she needs to be, but she likes to cut up, too. Um, okay, I guess I um, just want to thank them both for their great energy and for believing in me and having faith in me and for giving me that extra push when I needed it um, so that I could have the confidence in myself. I was wanna also would like to um, thank my fiance Al for putting up with me through my um, home study time and being patient and uh, tolerant through that and also helping me a great deal. Um, and I'll finish telling about you that um, I took my GED, the final exam, on my 40th birthday, and I think that was the best birthday present I could have given myself. Um, I'm looking forward to a promising career. So if there's anyone in the audience who um, wasn't able to finish high school for whatever reason, um, and you're thinking about taking the GED, I say go for it, don't hesitate. It's a small thing that you can do for yourself now that's going to benefit you and your future in the years to come. Thanks. You know, our GED classes are provided free of charge by the school board and grants from the state and federal government. So we don't ask anything of you except to try your best. But tonight I am gonna ask you one thing, and she mentioned it just uh, uh, a minute ago, Mona said it best by saying, if you know anyone who needs a GED, go and tell them, encourage them, tell them, hey, I did it, you can do it. 
They may need some encouragement. Remember how scared you were. Just encourage them. Tell them that you can do it. If you try, I did it. I made it. And then tell them about your new plans. Where, what else are you going to try? What new challenge are you going to try? We are all very proud of you, and probably one of the proudest is the leader of St. Tammany Parish Schools, our superintendent, and she has uh, some words for you at this time, Miss Gail Sloan. I am so honored to be able to offer to the graduates tonight congratulations on behalf of our school board and our school system. A week before last, I attended seven high school graduations. Tonight is the last of the school year, but I always find the GED graduation ceremony to be the best. It's a little secret we'll keep just right here in this room. And one of the reasons why I find it to be so is because it's awe-inspiring to hear the stories that we heard tonight from your fellow graduates, from Claude Guillard, who shared what he went through in a similar experience. You know, when you have to work hard for something, persevere and be determined, it really means more in the accomplishment than when something comes easy. So many of you have really learned from this experience because it hasn't been easy. You've had to persevere, you've had to stick in there, you've had to see it through. You've had maybe some life situations that have interfered with the traditional route to a high school diploma. But you got one anyway, and you really deserve to pat yourselves on the back, sort of take a deep breath, and bask in this accomplishment, because it is quite an accomplishment. I bet, and from hearing these stories tonight, I know that there are people here in the audience sharing this moment with you, and maybe some who aren't here too, that encouraged you, pushed you, prodded you, pulled you, just wouldn't let you give up. You need to tell them how much you appreciate that. Because to have somebody like that in your life is very special. Now you're going to be role models for other people. As you leave here tonight, you have this accomplishment under your belts. There are going to be other people who turn to you and say, how did you do it? How did you stick with it? Why was it so important to you? You need to, as Dr. Cherry said, encourage other people who maybe are in a situation similar to the one you found yourselves or that you see out there on the wrong path. Encourage them that they can be just like you if they bring the same determination, uh, the same hard work, the same achievement level to what they are trying to do. They can also graduate from high school and set on life's path. You've come through some difficult times, and now you're probably ready to have an easy time, huh? Life is not probably going to be the end of the difficult times it throws in your way. Some of you who are here tonight already know that. But you've learned some powerful tools to help get you through the difficult times. And I hope that you will apply those to whatever you do. Because there's so many rewards and satisfactions in life that make it worth the struggle, that make it worthwhile to maybe sometimes do things that aren't easy. Uh, there are people in your life that are counting on you to do that. So I, I congratulate you tonight on behalf of all of us. I'm glad that you took time to recognize the hard work of your teachers. I hope you'll do that up with your families too. As you move forward in your lives, there'll be a lot of people cheering for you, and our school system will be among those. Congratulations. At this time, we're going to invite Mr. Hennigan, president of the school board, to come up also, and uh, they will hand out the diplomas as you are, walk across the stage, and they'll want to shake your hand, each of your hands. So you'll get to shake the hand of the president of the school board and the superintendent all in one day. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, is Bob here? I'm sorry. Oh, and I see Jeb yet. I'm sorry. Oh, there were two, uh, two as they're lining up to come in, there were two uh, dignitaries that we did not uh, introduce. Uh, Pete Jabia, Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources for the school system. 
and also Mr. Bob Womack, uh, a school board member. Thank you. Okay, we are ready. Kristen, are you ready? Come on up. Kristen Brooke Alford. Kendrick L. Baker. Mandy L. Baser. Blake A. Bowden. Uh, Rachel A. Boudreau. Justin L. Brown. William Butterworth. Edward M. Dowling. Corey J. Dunn. Earl J. Decree. Samantha Lynn Dutry. Robbie A. Edgerson. Lisa M. Favela. June M. Fuentes. Brittany L. Gibbs. Emma F. Gugo. Christopher E. Guillory. Dalton M. Abair. Lillian M. Jones. Sammy J. Judah. Zachary M. Carajules. Valerie W. Keller. Brian J. Lunsford. Chad M. McLeod. Jennifer McMillicon. Uh, Christopher J. Mooney. Hannah M. Morley. Mona L. Morrell. Charles P. Mullen. Transeya A. Perry. Rachel M. Poe. Samantha C. Reese. Ian P. Rigney. Ray C. Robles. Jason Rosier uh, Sr. Guadalupe M. Sanchez. Jared Schmidt. L Lindsay M. Serpas. Kylie Shea. Uh, Zachary M. Shepherdson. Danielle M. Stapler. Michelle L. Stowe. Justin S. Stewart. Karen F. Thomas. Wade T. Willard. Carl M. Williams. Deshaun M. Williams. Garland E. Williams and Jenna K. Wilson. Let's give them a big hand. I guarantee I didn't hear a louder audience than any of those other graduations. Good job. It is my pleasure uh, now to use the authority vested in me by the State Department of Louisiana and by the St. Tammany Parish School Board to proclaim you graduates. Just one moment. 